it's bad. It's gonna be bad. years I've been surviving in the wilderness alone. I've had to struggle and starve, climb and hike. I've had to deal with the heat, the wet, and the bone-numbing cold and all of it alone. Would it be easier to be with another person? Finding food, finding water, building shelters, starting fires. And what if this other was my own son? You know, every year, hundreds of people venture out into the wilderness and they take off on a little day hike, simple afternoon of fishing. They find themselves turned around, disoriented. Maybe a bad storm comes in. Next thing you know, they're lost, they're stranded. They're away from their tents, their sleeping bags, their food, their equipment. And they have to survive and hope that someone comes to the rescue or they can find their way out. Well, that's the situation for Logan and I now. We're gonna have to survive out here as two. We might be twice as strong and be able to exert twice the effort. We also have two miles to feed. Out here, on the west coast of Vancouver Island. An ideal beach cove like this is deceptively attractive. It makes survival look like it could be easy, but survival is never easy. You can pretty much tell from the long shadows that the sun is on its way down, and it's going down fast. I give it maybe another hour. So what we really need to do now is pool our resources, get together, figure out what it is we have, what's in Logan's kayak, what's in my kayak, do our zone of assessment check. Zone number one, zone number two, what's close, and then tomorrow, zone number three. But for now, we just gotta make it through the first night. We've got everything that's on the sea kayaks, and we brought along a few little survival supplies. Fishing kit with just basic lures. Logan's set up for spin casting, and I'm set up for fly fishing. We've got a survival bag that got at the survival store. We've got this bivy sack, and I just want to try them out. Snare, trap? Nope. No? No, that's a saw. Mm. Saw. Okay. So this is one of those little saws you get in different survival kits. I've used these before, and they, I don't know, they always break on me. Logan has done only minimal camping over the years. He knows nothing of survival and what I've been going through to live through a survivor man ordeal. I need to find out is it going to be an asset or a liability? We're not going to have a fire tonight. That much is clear. Logan's asked if he could go do some fishing. And in a way, I could come down hard and say, well, are you crazy? We, we're out here for the night. We've got to get a fire going. We've got to find a place to settle down. But he doesn't have the experience of being out in the bush like this. So I'm letting him fish, basically going a little easy on him. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. I know what those are. These are very large wolf tracks. So we've got. Uh, potential company here in the form of quite a large wolf. Well, that'd make things interesting now, wouldn't it? That didn't take long at all. There goes the sun. And with it, the warmth. We'll see how we do sleeping on the sand. Uh, Logan and I decided that it's uh, Heck of a lot warmer actually laying up on these logs than it is on the sand. Using our life jackets as padding and paddle jackets as blankets. Actually not that bad. And the bonus actually is we're up high enough too that if the uh, tide comes in, we're above it. There won't be any sleeping under the stars tonight. The west coast is notoriously wet and foggy. See, this is the reason for people getting disoriented and lost, fog. When it gets to be this thick, you can't find your way out there. There's no point in uh, Logan 
going out fishing this morning. I don't want to let him go out into that. He gets to turn around in that, won't see him again. While the sun burns off the fog, Logan and I take to the bush to explore zone number three, the outer perimeter. The aboriginals in the area would harvest all this bark by cutting here and then pulling the strip up the tree and taking that and then using that for everything from baskets to, to, to housing to clothing. These trees will get bigger and bigger and they can harvest more, so this is a whole area of it. It's a whole bunch of red huckleberries up here. This is awesome. The only poisonous berry around here, oh, here's a couple more. There's a twin berry. What does it look like? Well, I'll show you if I find one. Yeah, that totally helps. This is a blue huckleberry on this tree right here. And uh, that's great. They're in season. Here, here's two. You like them? They're not bad. It's a little sour. You see, that's the difference of just sitting around and not doing anything and going for even a small hike when we find these berries. Hey, look at this. That looks like a trail to me. To the left to the right. We'll just follow it a little bit this way. Animal trail or something. That's the thing about finding established trails. They're extremely tempting. When you're lost, they're, they, they're like salvation. The problem is which way to turn, right or left, right? In this case, I know left has got to take us to the beach. But where does right go? How far does it go? Check this out, Logan. OK. So let's remember this one, because this tree, easy to get to, and this is an awesome overhang shelter if it starts to rain on us. We may even want to make our shelter here anyway. I don't know. Would you rather be here or on the beach? I'd rather be on the beach, personally. Still rather be on the beach? Yeah. All right, but if it starts to pour rain on us, this is, this is three minutes up from the beach, we can come up here and, uh, and get out of it, obviously, right? Yeah. The beach is a familiar place for Logan, and so it only follows that he prefer to stay there. One thing I'm starting to get a little worried about is water. We have to find water we can drink, Logan. Yeah. There's some dripping there. There's a slow drip up there. There's no real good source of fresh water at this beach, so these little drips are all we have at this point. It's a big problem. With our water supply coming in drips, it'll likely only be enough for one, but we are two. It's always been the irony of surviving beside an ocean of salt water where you can die of dehydration. For now, I'll let Logan head off and do something he's familiar with. Well, there he goes. We're both suffering from a little bit of a lack of energy. I don't know if it was the, the hike that we did a bit early or, or what, but uh, we're both dragging, and we're not actually lifting each other up right now, which is strange. We need to have a fire. But Logan really wants to fish, and of course, there's clear blue sky, right? So who knows? Maybe he'll get lucky. I got work to do. It would be a lot better if Logan would work with me, but I have to ease him into this thing that I call survival. I see something else I can grab even easier. Sharing jobs and responsibilities can be much more effective survival for two or more people. Ferns. While building, I look out and see Logan swimming in the cold ocean water with his kayak floating nearby. I'm questioning my decision to let him go fishing alone. What are you doing? You flipped. It's been two days of survival off the coast of Vancouver Island, and Logan, my son, has made a seemingly simple and benign mistake by flipping his kayak into the water. In a survival ordeal, Little accidents like that can kill and must always be taken seriously. What are you doing? You flipped. So you totally flipped? Yeah. Just trying to maneuver the stuff around. <laughs> not even with fish. Luckily, I was close, not too far out. Yeah, I mean, you're a good kayaker. I'm trying to figure out what happened. I mean, if that had happened way out there, you would have had some serious trouble. 
just with the fishing rod and everything, trying to get it in, yeah. there's nowhere to put anything. So you're leaning to different sides, just trying to hold the rod out there. Yeah. Lost the balance. Break anything on the kayak at all? No, it was just, it kayak right. didn't flip, I flipped into the water. Well, all right, well, ironically, I'm working on a fire, so get all this stuff out in that we got perfect sun, get it all out drying in the sun, yeah. and uh, throw in the other stuff. Let's just get you dry. So Logan flipped the kayak, but he flipped it only about 30 feet from shore, which is lucky. If he flipped it way out in the center somewhere or gone out into the waves a bit, would have been some pretty serious trouble. Beautiful day, it only takes a second to change everything for the worse. Now I really need to get a fire going for him. After I fell, it was, it was shock for a couple seconds and all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I'm in the water now. Luckily, I didn't have my spray skirt on. I thought I'd take it off. Just sheer luck that it didn't, uh, that I didn't have it on because if I did, I would have just flipped over and been stuck hanging upside down. That would have been really bad. It was really cold. My, uh, my heart rate's starting to slow down a bit. I'm starting to feel a little bit like I'm going into shock. By the time I got back to the beach, I was, I was cold. I was really cold. I was shaking. I was a little bit frantic. I was worried about, you know, getting hypothermia or get going into shock and, you know, being in real trouble. Because, man, it was cold. I'm still a little bit chilled right now. But working like this, building a shelter will get me nice and warm. So it's, uh, yeah, I was pretty lucky. Uh feel kind of bad for Logan. I mean, wiping out in a kayak. He said his heart started racing when he had to go back out for the paddle. It shows him how quick something can turn around. Fortunately, because it's a beautiful day, there's forgiveness. And he can uh, dry his clothing out in the sun and uh, calm himself down and help me now. What I thought of doing was taking your lip balm in my little kit of flies. There was some Q-tips and Band-Aids. So I'm just gonna take the Q-tips and I'm going to steal the cotton off the Q-tips. I've got six Q-tips, so I'll do three to start this. And Logan, I want you to watch how I do this in case you need to do it later, right? Yeah. Wax from the lip balm, put it into the cotton ball, fluff that up so it takes a spark. One thing, when you start striking your striker to get a fire, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're gonna use the blade of your knife, which people argue about, say never use a blade, I, I, I don't mind using the blade because I get a really good spark strong spark that way. But do it high up on the blade here. Yeah. So you don't dull the main cutting edge down down here, okay? Yep. As I say before every fire, wish me luck. Whoa, there we go, there we go. All right, that's got it. What do you think? Not a bad idea, eh? Just some Q-tips, well. lip balm, and we are in business with, with a simple spark, nice. Finally, Logan gets busy and pitches in to work on our necessities. For now, we'll simply build some small fern mattresses to keep us off the cold sand. But we're taking our chances that it won't rain overnight on the Northwest Pacific Coast. Let's see how this water's doing. Oh, best in time. It's full to the brim. Oh, that's good. All right. We've got a very small, but a constant supply of water at this point. Better? Thanks. It's always a strange thing with trying to convince people, actually even adults, trying to convince them to constantly drink. It can be tricky, especially in the wintertime, actually. But keeping people hydrated is vital in any survival situation, that's for sure. All right, I'm gonna put this cup back. Tiny patches of sphagnum moss. You can use it for toilet paper if you need to. Although, big question I get asked all the time, and you're gonna find this out, you won't be going to the bathroom until we get back in civilization. You just won't need to go unless, unless we catch a lot of fish. And banana slugs, unfortunately, we can't eat them. It's too bad though, eh? These guys are edible. You don't like that idea? Yeah. You really might in a couple berries of days. and slugs. 
I see water. It's either a ocean bay or fresh water. I don't know. There's a bunch of those berries. Oh, hey, you know what? There's salmon berries here, too. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Be a lot of bears come through here. This grass is all pushed down quite a bit. As great as these berries are, they're not going to be enough. I'm hoping we catch some nice big fish. Ugh. The groundwater here is brackish, fresh, mixed with salt water. Come on, show me some, some water up here. Let's try my old trick here. Squeezing some sphagnum moss. All of these plants here, there's about four or five different edible plants that we can, uh, we can gather and, and eat up. It's been good finding the berries. They represent familiar food for Logan, and familiarity goes a long way towards helping someone feel confident surviving. What we want to do in this case, this one, sort of a rare situation, we want to actually sort of save the plant, and it's called rice root. And I think you're going to like what you taste underneath. Pull everything back and away from it. You see that? Yeah, yeah. That white? So there's a bulb underneath. If you pull them out, those little rice things fall off it, and you just eat them raw. Then, for the plant... Yeah, there's lots in the hole. There's lots in the hole. That's what's going to happen, right? So cover over the hole and just transplant that, you know, another foot or two away. OK. And then it sort of spreads the plant and enables it to keep growing. This way, we're actually harvesting the plant. Rather than just destroying it. Rather than just destroying it and taking it. In a survival situation like this, you want to know what exists in every direction. So coming down here, finding this green patch, and being able to see all these wild edibles, none of that would have happened if we hadn't gone for the walk to see what was around us. We have not sat down and said, OK, we checked out our bodies, we checked out our gear that's in hand. We need to see what's further afield. That's zone of assessment one, two, and then three. So far, that's only one cup of water in each of us and a few mouthfuls of wild berries. We have to seek out a stream or river to keep us in fresh water. In too many ways, Logan doesn't really know what we're facing. He's relying on me to show him the way, which is fine, but it's also very draining on me psychologically. We tried to do some fishing for a bit and it didn't work out. Line tangled up on us. I couldn't get it going. I got like one cast in and it was like went 10 feet and then that was it. On the way back, I noticed a nice big halibut. And if I had a spear with me, smash. And I get the nice big halibut for dinner. Logan's sense of what's possible is positive and good, but not necessarily realistic. There we go. I think I got it going. Oh, it's hard on my arms. Logan's about to learn a valuable lesson in poor quality survival gear. Oh, shit. That hurt. Ow. My saw broke. Tried to put it back together. Doesn't really work, but I'm going to give it a try. My personal struggle with Logan as a father is convincing him to eat what he's not used to. He's much like I was when I was his age, hungry but picky, and that won't do in a survival situation. Gathered some seaweed while we were out. I'm just gonna get all the rice root into the cup here. You can boil it up and make it a little softer. And now some of the seaweed, kind of like making a bit of a miso soup, I suppose. This is just little, little bull kelp. This food I've gathered from the ocean side is appealing to me, but I'm familiar with it. I know what's important is just to get any kind of sustenance into our bodies. Logan is in a still too casual state of mind about it all, as if he's just out camping. But if he starts losing energy, it's going to hurt both our chances of surviving. Oh, the water tastes horrible. Let me try the rice. That's way better. It's nice and soft. <laughs> this is so dangerous, what you're doing. It's good, though, eh? It's like, it's almost like real rice. It's not bad. Better than nothing. I know, but seeing you two go for seconds means you must like it. 
Or it means I'm hungry. True. Want the last scoop of rice? I'm good. I'll be back. Hmm. Maybe he's stuffed. It's crazy. But sometimes the obvious escapes you in a survival ordeal. And we'd forgotten to utilize the emergency sleeping sacks the previous night. What's that you doing? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> Fine. Stop it. Screwing it up, man. Okay. You want me to help you get in that? No. Okay. Not four. All right, good night. Good night. We fell asleep well, and then the fire died on us, and he got pretty cold. Didn't die out completely, so I got it going again, but um, colder than the first night, strangely. I think I found his breakfast. All right. They're definitely alive. <laughs> this could be a serious meal for us. Logan actually got up. I guess the fire warmed him up. And uh, went for a walk, exploring down on the rocks. He should be on his way back. All right, so... I'm looking around for some crabs, some nice big crab for bait, some tiny fish for bait, anything like that that's gonna help me catch a nice big salmon or halibut or something big so I can, you know, actually have a good meal. I just gotta be careful that I don't end up slipping or tripping and falling in or break an ankle or an arm or something like that, so. Yeah, I mean, my spirit can only do so much. There's actually a uh, really cool starfish in this one. Bizarre, but it's cool. Got my uh, plastic bag for putting the uh, crabs and stuff in it. Just found a nice big one. Never mind, it's a snail. They're in here somewhere. It's not like they can leave right now, so... I just gotta find them. There's one. Snail. Crab. Crab. Nice big crab. That one bit me. Scared the crap out of me. Snail. Crab. Just trying to get this last guy in here. There's a big crab and a fairly decent minnow, so I'm gonna see if I can get them. A little minnow. Hello? How's it going? You got some bait. I got lots of bait. All right. Well, uh, Logan is uh, going after bait for fishing, hermit crabs. So that's good. Keeping him active, keeping his mind going on things. Take his mind off of his stomach. Give it another little while, and then we'll uh, we'll go get some water. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, what I want to do is. I'm gonna put it on the fire and it'll just naturally open up and I won't have to pry it open with a knife. I know Logan's stomach is getting to the better of him. It's a problem. I'm trained in this and uh, you bring someone in, take them out of their, their comfort zone. Some of the simplest things can be pretty rough for just about anybody. Sometimes even the easiest food to gather doesn't come without some kind of danger. My biggest worry right now is not so much our hunger, it's, uh, it's red tide. You can die from red tide. There's a couple different versions of it, but I don't want to have any of the versions. So what I'm going to do is do a bit of a poison test. This actually also works in, in ooh, this does look good, I gotta say. All right, so I'll take a small piece of it. Of course, the color of this happens to be red. That doesn't make me feel any better. It probably has no bearing on anything, but still, 
I'm gonna put it just in my lip here. Just in between my lip and my gum. I'm gonna hold it there for about three minutes or so. And I'm gonna try not to swallow. So I'll leave that there and see if I get any kind of tingling or numbing sensation. Three days into surviving with my son off the Northwest Pacific coast, and the ocean is proving bountiful. But without a good supply of fresh water, lots of food can become a moot point. All right, I guess it's been long enough. My mouth feels fine, no tingling, no numbing sensation. A little word of caution here, this is not the be all and end all way to test for red tide, not at all. In fact, what some people do, I've heard, is they'll, they'll take one of the mussels and they'll, they'll throw it out for the seagulls and they'll watch the seagulls and if the seagulls don't eat it or they come down and you know, spit it out sort of thing, it stays away. Wow, that's really good. That is the best mussel I've ever eaten in my life right there. Uh, I'm gonna leave one for Logan. Hopefully he'll like it. Logan is out searching for bait to fish with. It's what he knows, and keeping him busy is the key to keeping him positive. But I've noticed something. A good percentage of my energy is now spent on figuring out how to keep Logan motivated. These clams are a great score as far as I'm concerned, yet once again, Logan turns up his nose to good survival food. Anything? A little bit of a tingle on my tongue. You feel a tingle on your tongue? Tiny, tiny kind of bit, and right in my tooth. Well then, let's not take any chances. Mm -mm. Let's go catch some fish then. I have no way of knowing if Logan is just being picky about the food or if he really feels a tingling sensation on his lip from the clams. Either way, I'm not gonna push the issue. This plant right here, this bladderwrack, the juice inside having been tested is SPF 15. You can eat it and protect your skin with it at the same time. I'm making another spear for my dad. I've been working on this one for a while. So I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit. I'd never make a spear in a place like this as I believe it to be a waste of time. But perhaps I can learn a thing or two from Logan as well. Here we go. Hopefully this is gonna be good enough. Heading out to catch fish is a good proactive thing to do to keep our minds on survival. But it's still our lack of water that has me the most concern. Nice big full kelp here. You see the way all the weeds are bent? So the tide's coming back in. What's with the water? What do you mean? Look at it. It's all like weird. Weird? Yeah, it looks like there's like something in it. Yeah, you know why? Why? This is uh this is fresh water coming out here. Lots of it. So it's the fresh water mixing with the salt. This is awesome. This is a river coming out of here. This is a full on solid river. Let's see how far up we can get. A little rapids up there. We've come up to a river. This is awesome. Exploring provides answers and solutions. A half a cup a day of water dripping off a rock will not sustain us for much longer. And this is only a short paddle from our base camp. We don't really need to go all the way up to the falls. This water's rushing so much, it's gotta be fresh. So I'm just gonna test it. Why don't I just go up here? Oh, 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 oh. Look, there's a flounder right in front of me. Get me your spear. Hurry up, he's still there. I'm gonna do two of them. Come over here, you work this camera, okay? These two spears were Logan's idea, and I had figured they were nothing more than a way to keep him busy. Perfect. I got him! Oh man, your spears were a great idea. That's awesome. Look at that. What a great idea. Logan, if it wasn't for your spears, we wouldn't have this. I know. We would not have this guy. I was kind of like writing off your spears going, well, whatever, the chances of that happening were next to nothing, and look at that. This is one of those incredibly lucky moments that can be the turning point in a survival situation, moving things towards the better. And with it comes an ample supply of fresh water that we can bring back to our camp in the dry bags. I can't believe we caught a fish. Tide's coming in. 
We've got our first real meal in a few days. When the tide is in, the stream is obscured and easily missed when you paddle by. But at low tide, it becomes much more obvious, proving that even the timing of exploration makes a big difference in how you survive. If you hadn't made those spears, this wouldn't happen. And especially making two of them like that, we would have been standing there going, there's a fish, there's... and then we would have been looking for something, you know? Yeah. And likely, you know, probably lost them. I want to save all the guts so we can use it as bait. So it's a little harder to do than your standard average bass or pike. That's the heart. And I'll eat that for sure. Same thing with the liver. So I just want to get rid of the intestines. Now with both ample fresh water and this fish, survival is about to take a turn for the better. That is so long as I don't go and do something foolish. What you do? I moved the fire up onto the rock, got that all going, went over to feed the fire in my bare feet, and uh, I stood too close to where the old fire was, and I stood right in a uh, hotbed of coals. That's not good. Oh, all my weight down on my foot at the time, too. Oh, that's not good. It's, it's in cold water, and it's still burning. <laughs> Whatever this is, it's going to be one of the worst burns I've ever had, I think. It's the best thing I can do is just keep it in the water. There's really no better remedy for a burn than immersion in cold water on a constant basis. If I'm lucky, it'll eventually stop the pain and any tissue damage done by the burn. What a dumb move. Step right into what was the hot bed of coals and sand with my bare foot. Just start to get, you know, excited about having a big fish to cook and you get careless. Okay. You good? No open wounds? No. Uh, let's get back to cooking that fish. One thing you'll never be short of in ocean survival is spare rope. Oh, I can feel my toes starting to burn again. Okay, this is like every 10 minutes, I gotta go get my toes in the ocean. Oh, shoot. I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of in the field wilderness medicine here. Wow, that's not looking so good. I walked along and I grabbed it just as it was washing up. This stuff here, ladder rack. And this stuff will actually work to draw the heat away from the blisters. Just gonna squeeze it, there's like a goo here. Hmm. Well, I didn't know better, I'd say it feels like it's working already. Probably better than modern medicine. That was a foolish mistake to make. You know, I'm not, I'm not concentrating like I normally would. I've got Logan to think about. I really wanna push him, you know, I mean, I have to push him when it comes to eating out here. You get what you're lucky to get, and you eat it up. And tomorrow is Logan's 16th birthday. What we're going to do is we're going to build a catamaran type style with the two kayaks. So I got to get a bunch of uh, nice long logs. Not too big, not too heavy, just kind of thin and uh, stable. Because, I mean, with me dumping my kayak, just sitting in it, if you get a big fish, I'm going right in the water, and it's pretty windy. Logan's working on binding the raft so we can head out together and fish without fear of flipping the kayaks in the water. I'll work on getting the fish cooked, in between giving him a hand and cooling my burnt foot off in the ocean. Hey, 
every beach, everywhere in the world. Float some useful for survival. We're not at home. This is survival. And the more nutrients we get into ourselves, the stronger we'll feel. But he seems down today, so he's spearfishing right now. Just along the sand, it's keeping him occupied. I think me burning my toes shook him up a little. Flipping in the kayak shook him up a little yesterday, so hopefully nothing goes wrong tomorrow. Because tomorrow we're gonna head out and try some serious fishing now that we're sort of set up here. Mm. And now there's no problem with me taking in the salt because we have the ample supply of fresh water and that's that's key. Last bit of fish innards. I don't know what it is, we'll just call it the mystery organ. Ooh, whatever it is, it tastes good. Well, the main meal's almost ready, and I know it's gonna make Logan feel a lot better. Get a big chunk of halibut in him. How is it? Good. It's awesome? It's not bad. I would have left it in for another 10, 15 minutes, let it, uh... You know what? Let the sliminess go away. I couldn't, you know why? It was gonna fall through. It's, it, think of it as sushi, which we eat raw. I mean, we could have eaten this whole fish raw. So. It's yeah. good. Get it all into you, man. Because I ate up the organs, you didn't want them. You gotta get food into you so you're feeling stronger. You're not gonna eat more? No, I can't get much in my stomach right now. Why not? Just having not eaten the last couple of days kind of thing. All right, so we'll put all this nice fresh meat into the cup and then we'll boil it up and that'll cook it more, cook it the rest of the way through. Okay. So, I'm sorry to push on this, but the more nutrients I get in you, the better. The no, I know, it's just, it's, it's hard to get it down. But it's just like fish broth, it's awesome. I know, but it's fish broth slimy. Seriously, dude, you gotta get out more. The dynamics of being out here with my son are strange for me. We must survive effectively. I can't let my guard drop. For if I do, we both suffer. And I can't deny the fact that having to think for two is taxing on me. And yet the huge advantage is the camaraderie. And this day is Logan's 16th birthday. So maybe I can consider this like a rite of passage for him. Hey, come here, Logan. Someone left a message. Thanks, Ted. Happy birthday. Thanks. I'm glad we're out here together on this. Yeah, that's a lot better than you being alone. Ah, uh, it's a lot better than me missing your 16th birthday. Yes, sir. I'm glad you're out here. Me too. With the celebrations all done, we still need to eat. One fish between two people after four days is not good enough. We need more, and we do have fishing tackle, a huge advantage for survival. You want to take advantage of this. It's calm waters, there's nothing more than a breeze. And when that wind picks up and you get white caps out here like there was the other day, yesterday, we don't stand a chance of coming out here for fish. What do you think? I think we're good. All right, it's pretty darn stable. We're locked together here. Okay, drop her down. Let's see what you can do. If good luck evades us here, we'll be in trouble. We've cleared the site of berries, and the only plants left on the land are bitter greens. So we'll be stuck with a diet of seaweed and bull kelp. Keep bringing them in. Oh, that's not, that's a dinner right there. Okay. I got him in my bag. Can we do this? What do you think? Keep coming, keep coming. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's dinner right there, baby. That's beautiful. Awesome. That's one. Woohoo! And that's all that's needed sometimes in survival. Just something, anything to boost your spirits to bring about some psychological comfort and keep you going till the next day. Yep. You got one? Yep. Oh, 
Okay, he's in my boat. <laughs> Sweet job, Logan. That's two. Binding the kayaks together to make a catamaran is working out. We're stable and yet mobile enough to paddle out into the bigger ocean. You're trolling, right? Yeah. Oh, I got a fish. <laughs> it was so small that I didn't really feel it. All right, there's my contribution. Not a bad outing. Four fish, they're not huge, but they're still gonna feed us today. Finally, having two people in a survival situation is showing itself to be advantageous. Digging a fish cooking pit has never been an option for me when I was alone. You know, that's not bad. It helps that we're on a beach. The effort of doing this alone has always been too much to make it worth my while. That's about perfect. What we need to do next is get a fire going in here, and that's gonna be your job. I'm just gonna leave Logan alone to get that fire going. But for now, I've gotta get something to wrap the fish in. And I know what I want. He knows how vital it is to get that fire going. And without any matches, nothing more than a spark, and some cotton, lip balm. Hopefully he can get it going. It was a difficult thing for me to consider. If Logan uses up all the good fire starting supplies we have, then everything gets much tougher. But I've got to begin to start relying on his help. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. This is skunk cabbage, and it's a perfect way to wrap the fish One, for underground cooking. Two. While I'm at it, all this salal is what I need as well. All right. I'm hoping you got the fire going. All of this work is a heck of a lot easier with two of us. I mean, the reality is that if it wasn't for Logan, I never would have had spears to catch that fish yesterday. And if it wasn't for Logan, I only caught one tiny little fish. He caught three. So all of a sudden, survival with two starts to pan out as being a little more advantageous. I don't see fire. I don't see smoke. This is not good news on a few levels. Spark it up yet? God, no. No, did it, did it get a flame? No. No flame at all? No flame. I had flame for like half a second, and it died. Is it still in there? Do you still have it? Barely. Well, let me try. So grass is my favorite. You can, in a pinch, spark right into grass and get it to go sometimes. So you need a good splay of spark. Unfortunately, Logan has left me with only one tiny, barely visible little bit of cotton fluff. Here we go, all right? Here's my flame. Now we gotta get a big fire here, nice and hot, and let it burn and get all these rocks heated up. You okay? Yep. Are you bummed out because you didn't get the fire? No, better. Don't worry about it, man. It's not, it's, it's hard to get a fire with just a spark. It's a lot different when you've got a lighter or matches, you know? Believe me, it took me a long time before I could get fire. Oh, but this is gonna be nice. Check it out. Looks good, eh? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm on a cooking show. You gotta keep a way of keeping the fish clean, and this is the way. Skunk cabbage leaves. To make pit cooking effective, we'll have to work together in a timely manner. And yet we should be out of daylight in just an hour or two. What do you think? Can we drop that in the pit to cook up? Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all this fire out, and then when I say go, salal in. Fish on top of the salal. Tube lands on the fish, and then those leaves flat. All right, now, cover over. So we want to trap steam inside. So we cover over completely. The water poured in through the bulk kelp will hit the hot rocks and steam cook the fish. Oh yeah, I can hear it steaming like crazy. All right, well, it's open. Oh yeah, I can feel the heat, that's for sure. Super hot. 
think we're almost there. Small fish. Was good. Not getting the fire going was a blow to Logan's ego. Okay. But eating some real fresh fish after four days with little food will be a big boost to his morale. Wow. Oh, yeah. Cooked beautifully. It's tender, buddy. Oh, my God, Logan. That's amazing. It's a good dinner. These are your fish. Mm -hmm. One of yours, too. Yeah, just a little guy. Well, happy 16th birthday, bro. Thank you. That's a great way to end the day. There have been things that I was right about when it comes to surviving as two. I was right that the camaraderie can keep us moving forward and help us to seemingly ignore the pain in our stomachs from a lack of food. I was right that when we work together on certain tasks, it all becomes much easier to accomplish. But I underestimated how much effort I need to spend to keep my son motivated. And I was wrong to write off, at least in my mind, if not to his face, the idea of making spears as being anything other than unnecessary. Logan has a long way to go to do what I do, but he's made the first step. And the journey of survival is the same as any other journey in life. It starts with one step, but continues only if you keep moving. Way to hit the camera. <laughs> Takes out the camera. <laughs>